Hi, my name is Blake, and I have just a quick note before we get started. This special episode of Abandoned, the All-American Ruins podcast, was produced exclusively for the Colorado Magazine, a publication of History Colorado. Established in 1879, History Colorado is a nonprofit organization and an agency of the state of Colorado. History Colorado shares powerful stories and offers access to Colorado's history through cultural experiences, museums and historic sites, programs for families and adults, stewardship of Colorado's historic treasures, and resources for students and teachers making a positive impact. History Colorado also provides programs related to historic preservation and archaeology, as well as access to a vast collection of archives, artifacts, and historical photography. You can learn more at historycolorado.org. That's historycolorado.org. Now, if you're tuning in because you found this episode of Abandoned, the All-American Ruins podcast through History Colorado, then welcome. I'm glad you're here. And if you're a returning guest, then welcome back. As I mentioned, this is a special episode of this particular podcast. I just finished releasing the first season. Yay! I'd be honored if you'd listen to it sometime. For context, Abandoned, the All-American Ruins podcast is an immersive audio experience where I guide listeners through sonic fantasies, recreating my expeditions to abandoned spaces across the United States. So usually, when you listen to my show, I ask you politely to listen with headphones and your imagination and make sure everything else is turned off. But because this is a bonus episode that I'm producing exclusively for History Colorado, it's a little less immersive. I'd still encourage you to grab your headphones, and I would definitely make sure you can climb inside your imagination today. But if you can't do either, or both, don't worry. There's an entire season of fully immersive audio experiences waiting for you to sonically explore the ruins of America, wherever you get your podcasts. So, without further ado, please sit back and enjoy this special bonus episode of Abandoned, the All-American Ruins podcast. I didn't know they made color films back in 1933, but they did. At least, Ray Bell Films did. And in 1933, Ray Bell Films, a small St. Paul, Minnesota-based production company, produced a short film, almost like a really long commercial, called Land of Sunshine, paid for by modern woodmen of America. At the foot of Pikes Peak in Colorado is nestled the city of Colorado Springs, well known to thousands of visitors and tourists from all over the world. Modern Woodmen of America is a fraternal benefit society. Out of town, over the Mesa Road, after passing the famous Garden of the Gods, a roadside sign points the way to a famous institution a few miles distant. You've probably heard the term mutual aid. That's kind of what a fraternal benefit society does. We follow directions, and on we go, the mountains on our left, the open plains on our right. They provide benefits for education, unemployment, retirement, births, deaths, natural disasters, sickness, medical expenses. We catch our first glimpse of a wonderful beauty spot at the foot of Mount Cedar, where once was waste and barren land, transformed by human hands and nature into a haven of health-giving and life-saving by that fraternal insurance society, Modern Woodmen of America. So, if you break it down, fraternal benefit societies provide financial assistance to relieve folks who are making major life changes or who have fallen on hard times. No scenic tour of the Pike Peak region is complete without a stop at this unusual institution where during the summer season, an average of 11,000 visitors are welcome. These kinds of organizations typically offer some kind of congregational framework, trainings, clubs, educational and social programs, to help support and contribute to the community at large. Modern Woodmen of America, founded in 1883, was that. They still exist today, actually, but now they're really just another insurance company. Here since 1909, this sanatorium has been conquering tuberculosis, furnishing free treatment and care to the afflicted. From Mount Rose, there unfolds a view of this tiny town of Woodmen, Colorado, 
where through an investment of one and one half million dollars, 9,500 afflicted members have received its benefits, most of them being restored to health and future usefulness. If you go watch the PSA for this sanatorium, which I hope you do, it's linked in the show notes, the camera pans from west to east across the main property, and just before it hits what's now Woodman Road in Colorado Springs, the filmmakers cut, which is a bummer, because had they panned the camera another five seconds, we'd get to see the dairy farm. Within the receiving hospital's walls of native stone are complete and modern facilities for the comfort and care of afflicted but hopeful patients. The same dairy farm that sat abandoned down the hill from my childhood home. The superintendent, medical staff, and graduate nurses are there to serve. That dairy farm was part of the Modern Woodman of America TB sanatorium operation, a crucial part, actually. Patients, as soon as able, are graduated from the receiving hospital to individual tent cottages. They're small but comfortable homes. If you've been here before, you know that this podcast and the entire All-American Ruins multiverse finds its humble beginnings inside that abandoned dairy farm in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains that hover over Colorado Springs, Colorado, which is where I'm from. Flowers, trees, and foliage in abundance delight the eye and soften the surrounding landscape. And down the hill from my childhood home sat that abandoned dairy farm. You can hear more about it in episode one. But first, I want you to close your eyes for a moment. I'll show it to you. The whole scene herd furnishes ample quantities of milk of wonderful and nourishing quality. Celebrated prize winners are in this herd, and every cow is kept in sanitary surround. Sanitary surround. Sanitary surround. Sanitary surround. You can see it, right? The white farmhouse with the brick siding. And the animals painted into the windows. It's 1933, in the unmatchable Colorado summer, and you and I are standing at the top of a giant hill overlooking this farm. There, over to the left, a long barn, an off-white color with large stones that make up the base. A silo, not too tall, not too wide, casting a perfect shadow in the Woodman Valley. The land of sunshine. Now, keep turning to your left, just past that small grove of Ponderosa, an even smaller cluster of sandstone. There, stop. You see it? That's the pasture, filled with the Holstein cows. Aren't they something? I love watching them eat. Graze. Because right now, they don't care about anything but eating. And with that kind of simple mindset, you may not realize the sheer intelligence and majesty of the Holstein cow. And this particular herd, well, these cows actually have a very important job. These cows are helping the staff at the sanatorium save the lives of hundreds of patients who reside there. sunshine, pure fresh air, the tonic of nature here in abundance. The medical staff members are specialists in their lives. Graduate nurses give patients individual care and constant attention in hospital and college. Recently, I read an article about the dairy farm in the Gazette Telegraph that mentions the diet of patients at the sanatorium. When do we eat? Now and how? Back then, one of the primary symptoms doctors monitored in a TB patient was their weight. Each man takes a good appetite with him to the dining room. Medical staff provided hearty, large meals multiple times a day to improve the vigor in the quote-unquote consumptives, a.k.a. patients with tuberculosis. The best of food and plenty of it to build up strength, one of the main requisites of treatment. Although the Land of Sunshine promotional film doesn't mention any specifics, the article in the Gazette Telegraph does. At least six eggs and ten glasses of milk a day. That's right. So that important job I told you the Holstein herd was responsible for? From a spotless kitchen to a cheerful dining room, 
Each meal fully satisfies the appetite. It was to help save patients, to give them strength. And I don't think it was just physical strength. Those cows nourished the minds of those patients, too. Their hearts. Their spirits. Which is fascinating to me, because that means that the dairy farm was built intentionally as a source of healing. And the reason that's so fascinating to me is because that dairy farm, even after it was abandoned, continued to serve as a place of healing. For me, a yearly average of over 360,000 meals are served with food the best that money can buy. The first time I poked around the abandoned dairy farm was in 1993. I was six years old. My father took my brother and me down that hill and walked us around the property. As we rounded the corner to the front of the main house, I could see that there was an easy way to get in. They hadn't really done the best job boarding it up. In the days to follow, I came back to the dairy farm by myself, got inside, stood up, and I immediately had this funny feeling right down in my gut as if I'd been there before. This wasn't possible, of course, because the dairy farm, a gift from millionaire Blevins Davis to the Sisters of St. Francis of Perpetual Adoration, was out of use by 1980. And in the 13 years between its closure and eventual demise, the site became a popular destination for thrill-seekers and trespassers. That funny feeling in my gut was more than a strange, almost otherworldly familiarity. It also gave me a sense of safety, security, and serenity. I ran my fingers along the walls, and somehow, it was recognizable to me. There's actually a word for this sensation, almost a longing for a place one has never experienced. The word is animoia, defined by the Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows as a deep feeling of nostalgia for a time one has never known. You may also be interested to know that C.S. Lewis championed a German term that vaguely describes the feeling, sensucht, a yearning, wistful longing. The dairy farm slowly transformed into my private sanctuary, where I was shielded from the reality of the outside world. My parents' fights, the bullies at school, a secret I'd been keeping about who I was because I didn't want to go to hell. This anamoya, generated by the dairy farm's presence, brought me peace and I sought it out as much as I could. I began to invent stories about the people who used to live there, and I felt a sense of belonging, kinship, and meaning. Consequently, the abandoned dairy farm became the genesis of an extraordinary personal credence, that my imagination exists not only as a place of wonderment and creativity, but also as a place of great comfort and healing. Good idea. I'd like to have these family meetings every week. After we work this out, later on we can check on the Eventually, a fire took the life of my private sanctuary. In 1994, some teenagers burned it past the point of no return. Then, its remains were leveled and bulldozed, and eventually, overpriced, gaudy condos took its place. Though the physical space had been destroyed, the spiritual domain that I discovered there seemed to linger within me. I carried those memories with me in my subconscious until May of 2020, when I woke up from a dream that I was back inside the dairy farm once again, that same funny feeling still right down in my gut. It was the first time in months that I'd felt a sense of safety, security, and serenity. At that point, 
The COVID-19 pandemic had been raging for over three months in the United States, and my germaphobe-centric anxiety had taken full control of my life. More than 50,000 Americans have now died from this virus. 75,000 more deaths. More than 100,000 Americans have now lost their lives to COVID-19. That is more than the wars in Vietnam, Afghanistan, and Iraq combined. Combined. The isolation began to wreak serious havoc on my head and heart. And though I knew I wasn't alone in the collective feelings of confusion, fear, and hopelessness, I still felt deeply isolated. I lay in bed, staring at the ceiling, thinking about the abandoned dairy farm, and I wondered if there were any abandoned buildings near my house in the Hudson Valley, New York. And you know the rest of the story if you've listened to the show. I hopped out of bed, did a quick Google search for abandoned spaces near me, and as it turns out, they're everywhere. I'd unintentionally stumbled on a world I'd never heard of. Urban exploration, or urbex for short, an underground community devoted to many odysseys all over the world in search of the drudge and decay of once-occupied dwellings. And not just in urban areas, as the name suggests, but in suburban and rural areas too. Urban exploration is the fascination of abandoned places. That's Kay, an urbexer who goes by no tracers online, meaning leave no trace. And what urban explorers do is we explore those abandoned places and oftentimes document not only the building, but we capture the essence of it as well as sharing the history of those places. And sometimes we even try to save them through our photography and our love for those buildings and the architecture. Most urbexers aren't arsonists. Rather, they're respectful admirers of history, gatekeepers into the past who understand the significance of even the most unknown, unexplored spaces. There's a collective of people out there that are trying to restore these buildings, trying to get them status as a protected building or a historical building so that they aren't torn down or destroyed. I actually explored my first kind of abandoned area when I was a kid. I definitely feel spiritually connected to them. I feel like they speak to us when you step into one of these buildings. As I devoured more information about this global company of misfits intent on seeing the unseen, unafraid to bend a trespassing rule or two, I couldn't help but laugh. Apparently, I'd been an urbexer myself ever since I was six years old, talking to ghosts inside my secret universe, the modern woodman of America dairy farm. With my interest piqued, I began to scour the internet, hoping to learn more about the abandoned dairy farm from my past. And that's how I realized that it had its own pandemic-related roots. Tuberculosis. TB? What is TB? TB is tuberculosis. It's catching. It respects no age, sex, class, or race. Ah... TB. Consumption. It took me until working on this collaboration with History Colorado to realize that, back in the day, consumption was a term commonly used for folks afflicted with TB because of the way it quite literally wasted their bodies away. TB breeds in neglect, overcrowding, bad housing conditions. But TB can be anywhere, in the slums or on the avenue. It thrives on ignorance of the facts. Embarrassingly, I grew up under the guise that TB had been eradicated when modern antibiotic treatments entered the picture in 1946, a year before modern Woodman of America Sanatorium closed. Untrue. Scientists estimate that currently, roughly one-third of the human population carries a form of TB known as latent TB. Simply put, the TB bacterium inside an infected human are sleeping, which means that 
People with latent TB cannot transmit or even feel symptoms of the disease. It can be anywhere. It is insidious, tireless. It can exist unknown among you because it shows no outward sign. As the CDC suggests, with an almost gleeful tone, German physician Johann Schonlein coined the term tuberculosis in 1834, though it is estimated that the bacterium may have been around as long as three million years. In addition, according to the National Library of Medicine, the genus Mycobacterium, which causes tuberculosis, may date back to roughly 150 million years ago. The long-standing TB is an infectious, highly contagious disease. Of course, you're healthy. You think it can't happen to you. But TB might happen to you, without warning. Once it catches up with you, TB can slow you down to a standstill. Down to a standstill. The chance of survival was extremely rare until the mid-1850s when the first kind of treatment popped up in Germany, the tuberculosis sanatorium. Modeled after European mountain spas and resorts, sanatoria offered the consumptive a chance to breathe fresh mountain air, bathe in sunshine, and take lengthy walks as part of an intense healing regimen that included protein-packed diets and relaxation. After General William Jackson Palmer founded Colorado Springs in 1871, the city and surrounding area became a hot spot for Go West tourism, a gateway to the Rockies. Known for its year-round sunshine and dry climate, sanatoria began to pop up across the Front Range region, becoming, quote, a most desirable destination for chasing the TB cure in the City of Sunshine, according to the Pioneers Museum City of Sunshine exhibit. Because in the late 1800s and the early 1900s, Colorado Springs had become a destination for people suffering from the disease of tuberculosis, specifically pulmonary tuberculosis. Susan, a volunteer at the Pioneers Museum, explains. The reason people came to Colorado Springs was that the prevailing knowledge at the time said that at this altitude, the air was germ-free. So, people flocked to Colorado Springs. This influx changed the architecture. Enter the Modern Woodman of America TB Sanatorium. Among the many sanatoria located in Colorado Springs, the Modern Woodman of America Sanatorium became internationally recognized as one of the most restorative healing spots due to its location in the shadow of Blodgett Peak. This was year-round treatment, which probably got a little uncomfortable in the winter. From 1909 to 1947, the sanatorium essentially functioned as its own town, boasting a train station, power plant, reservoir, orchard, administrative buildings, auditorium, 245 of the iconic TB huts, as well as the state's largest dairy herd, those Holstein cows we saw earlier. Not only was it year-round, but it was not a quick recovery, if there was a recovery at all. Patients often had to spend a year or two trying to recuperate or have a remission from TB. From TB. From TB. I couldn't have known it as a child, but as I said earlier, the act of spending as much time as I did at the abandoned dairy farm would inspire my own emotional, mental, and spiritual rehabilitation during a different pandemic, the COVID-19 one. I began to venture out across the country in search of more abandoned spaces, and All American Ruins, an ongoing multimedia travelogue, was born. The project recounts my experiences exploring abandoned spaces across the United States and reimagines them via written, photographic, cinematic, and audio storytelling, aka this podcast. All American Ruins allows me to ask critical questions about American history and culture, community, capitalism and economics, the environment, and mental health while also encouraging folks to activate their own imaginations as a tool for healing.
For nearly three years, I've ventured out to all kinds of abandoned spaces. Most of these places are the kinds that look like they've been raptured. What started as a way to pass the time safely evolved into a salve for my mental health and a realm for my creativity to explode. I began to write about my experiences in each location, not just about the space itself, its architectural narrative, or the sordid history behind it, but also about what was going on inside my head as I wandered through each one. The more I went, the more I began to realize that I was reconnecting with my childhood self and imagination that had become a healing realm all those years ago at the abandoned dairy farm. A dairy farm whose entire mission was described in the 1932 Superintendent's Report to the Executive Board of Modern Woodmen of America. It states, The paramount purpose of the sanatorium is the care and treatment of beneficial members of the society afflicted with tuberculosis, so as to give them the best possible chance to overcome the disease and live. In a way, that mission lasted into 2020 when the world shut down, and I had that dream about the dairy farm, the dream that fueled this project where I have been able to bear witness to humanity and honor the sometimes soiled American past. The untold stories of regular everyday folk just like me, forgotten histories that live inside the walls of each abandoned space where lives were once lived, and pain was once felt, and love was once expressed. It's grounded me in a way that I can't explain, except through immense gratitude and creative expression, and the sheer willingness to keep showing up for that magical, funny feeling right down in my gut. The same one that brought me the safety, security, and serenity I felt all those years ago at an abandoned dairy farm in the foothills of the Colorado Rockies. Later brought back to health at this great hope station and taught how to live, patients leave for home. Cheerio and good luck, a happy going away. Since the year 1909, this scene has been almost a daily occurrence for those whose lives have been saved for future usefulness. Back to the world of work, to families, friends, and neighbors. From the land of sunshine. If you're just tuning in for the first time, then again, welcome to the first season of Abandoned, the All-American Ruins podcast. Join me as I take you on immersive sonic journeys, recounting my expeditions of abandoned spaces across the United States, which I transform into fantastical audio experiences that allow you, dear listener, to dive into my imagination with me, or maybe inspire you to go out and use your own. The entire first season is available now, wherever you get your podcasts. If you liked what you heard in this episode, then go check it out. And if you're feeling super generous, maybe you could even rate it, review it, and subscribe to it. Then you and I can keep feeling this abandoned fantasy together. This special episode of Abandoned, the All-American Ruins podcast, was produced exclusively for the Colorado Magazine, a publication of History Colorado where you can read all about the modern Woodman of America sanatorium and dairy farm in the full companion article I wrote to accompany this podcast episode. Established in 1879, History Colorado is a nonprofit organization, an agency of the state of Colorado, that shares powerful stories and offers access to Colorado's history through cultural experiences. You can learn more at historycolorado.org. That's historycolorado.org. Also, I forgot to mention, if you like to read or enjoy amateur photography, you can catch up on more of my adventures at allamericanruins.com or follow me on Instagram at allamericanruins. Abandoned, the All American Ruins podcast is written, edited, produced, and hosted by me, Blake File, with studio space courtesy of Radio Kingston, WKNY, AM 1490, FM 1079 in Kingston, New York. Special thanks to Ida Hakala, Jimmy Buff, and Manuel Bloss for the mentorship and encouragement, Sam Bach at History Colorado for making this nifty collaboration happen, and to everyone who helped me with my research on this special episode, including the brave firefighters at Woodman Valley Fire Department, especially Kevin Bush for helping me stoke the coals of my memory of the dairy farm, his gracious wife Marie Bush for finding and scanning her photographs of the modern Woodman of America dairy farm, Matt Mayberry, Hilary Mannion and Susan Cond at the Pioneers Museum in Colorado Springs, 
the Regional History and Genealogy Department of the Pikes Peak Library District, Sister Stephanie McReynolds, the archivist at Mount St. Francis Nursing Center, Kay from No Tracers Podcast, and Leah in Corporate Communications at Modern Woodman of America Fraternal Financial. I am extremely grateful for the help. Thank you.